What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcast. So today, man, there's a lot of weird games coming out right now. There really sincerely are. There's a lot of odd games coming out at the moment, but I like that. That's what I appreciate. I appreciate novelty. You'll find that most of the bands I listen to, like, there are no other bands like them. Like, they are super unique and super interesting. And, and like, I enjoy that in video games, too. I do enjoy kind of genres in video games. But I, I love weirdness as well. It's kind of why I got into doing what I do here on the internet. So this game is called Wingspan. If you've never heard of this game before, apparently this is a conversion from a board game. I guess I've never heard of it, but effectively it's a strategy game about building a wildlife habitat for birds. A and actually, it's kind of fun, actually. It's a cool game that's got sort of like incremental steps. And, and like once you learn how to play it, it is a very thoughtful sort of strategic game where you are actively playing against other people, but you're doing it with like non-violence. Effectively, you're trying to build a better zoo for birds than your opponents are. And, and so it's kind of a cool game in that regard. It's got a lot of rules and it's got a lot of minutia. It does take a bit like the tutorial. It's going to take you a good 30, 40 minutes to mash your way through the tutorial. So there is going to be a learning curve with this game. It's going to take you a little bit of time, uh, I think, to get a handle of. But once you've got it, it actually flows somewhat intuitively. I think that like it's just you learning the UI of the game that takes a little bit of time So we're gonna play here. I have a game right there that I was running just trying to sort of like automate everything and figure out how it all works uh, But here we go. We'll start off right here. We can play against as many opponents as we want uh, We can start I mean I'm pretty sure you can play without an opponent too and you can just like build your own wildlife habitat I think it doesn't really matter I'll go with a couple of easy AIs for right now because I'm gonna be like more focused on explaining the game to you and showing you how it works uh, then I am kind of competing with the opponent, making tactical decisions. But let's start it on off. All right, so we have eight turns left. Uh, there's going to be a total of, I think, like four rounds. And every round, you have one less turn than the previous round. But for right now, we have the ability to do eight turns in this round. Next time, we'll have seven, so on and so forth. Uh, in addition, there's going to be, like, other goals and things that are going to happen. So, like, for example, right here, it's going to count the total amount of birds that we have played. And then at the end of this round, it's going to count the total number of eggs on birds. So there you go, and it's going to give us kind of points based on how many eggs we have laid. Over here, it's going to count the total number of eggs that they've laid in a specific habitat, in this case the grasslands, and it's going to give us points based on that. And then on this final turn, it's going to count the number of eggs on birds that have a specific nest type, the basket nest. And, and so anyways, the game does have like a lot of moving parts and things going on, as you can tell already. But I'm going to do my best to smooth the experience out and kind of show you how to play the game. At the beginning of the game, we have to choose five things that we want. The things that we can choose are birds, and the things that we can choose are food for those birds. So really what we want to look at is we want to look at each one of these cards, and we kind of want to thoughtfully know what all of the iconography does on each of these birds. So let me go through it real fast, and we'll kind of go through. Uh, the top part is where they can be played at, all right? So this guy likes to be in the forest. This guy likes to be in the grassland. This guy can be anywhere. This guy can be anywhere, and this guy can only be in the grassland. You can alternate between those different habitats by clicking over here on the left, and each of these habitats does different things, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Underneath that is the food that they require in order to be placed onto that wildlife habitat that they want to live inside of. So right here, the Cerulean Warbler requires a worm and also requires a grain. This guy right here requires anything and a grain. This guy requires two worms. This guy takes a berry, a worm, or a grain. Any of those three to be activated. And then this guy right here will take a worm or a grain. Beneath that, you have the amount of points that you get for playing that bird. So... When that bird has been played, this bird is worth four points, this bird is worth three points, this bird is worth three, this bird is worth three, and this bird is worth zero. However, this bird can be played anywhere and has a whole bunch, well, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I wanted to talk about the benefits of playing this bird that doesn't score you any points right here, but we'll get to it. Underneath that, you have the nest type. All right, so these guys, they make a nest in a tree. This guy right here lays its nest, I think, in stones on the ground. This guy right here lays his nest in the tree. Not really super relevant for right now, but it is relevant for, like, for example, those point tallies that we had at the end of the game. Their nest type will be relevant them. Underneath that, we have their wingspan, how large their wingspan is, which is only important for the same types of goals that are counted at the end of rounds like these are. It's not super important, but, like, sometimes you'll get a goal that's like, hey, you get an extra point for every bird you play with a wingspan between 20 and 30 centimeters, you know? 
uh, down here we have activations. These activations are basically special abilities that these birds have that come into play at various times or at various, I guess, criteria being fulfilled. Uh, so when this guy is played, you can draw two bonus cards and keep one. When this guy is pl activated, uh, which means that when you use them on a particular tile, which you use these as tools on particular tiles to accomplish different goals, like there is a point to playing birds on different tiles, they basically increase your turn economy. You get a bonus turn for every bird that you have on a tile. And so if you wanted to play a turn in the forest tile, and you have two birds there already, you'll get three turns on that tile instead of one. But that's kind of like advanced gameplay for later. We'll talk about that once we get into it. So for right now, what we need to do is we need to pick our birds. At the bottom, that's how many eggs that they can carry, by the way. Uh, there are reasons why you will play eggs on these individual birds. The amount of eggs that you have stocked on birds on pre-existing tiles, they allow you to hatch new birds on those tiles. The more birds you have on a tile, the more eggs it costs you in order to play, like, the next bird down the chain, effectively. Uh, so for right now, we want to take a look at what these guys have. This is actually kind of a bad draw. Uh, a lot of these guys take multiples, which is bad. Uh, we don't want things that take multiples at the beginning. We want things that take, like, single resources and are cheap and fast to play. But for right now, uh, we'll go for quality over quantity, since that's kind of what the game, what the draw is forcing right now. Uh, two worms is not going to be possible, so we don't want the Nighthawk. If this bird is to the right of all the other birds in its habitat, move it to a different habitat. Oh, uh, so it doesn't like being overcrowded. Okay, I get it. Uh, we can lay one egg on any bird right there. I would take the Baird's Sparrow. I would take the Song Sparrow, and then I would suggest taking a Worm, a Grain, and a Berry. And then we'll just have to leave these other guys and not take them. No matter how bad we like the burbs, we can't have them. So there you go. And then we get a bonus card at the beginning of the game. What the bonus card does is it'll allow us to score extra points by fulfilling certain criteria. Uh, so basically this one right here will give us points for every single bird that has death in its power, I guess. So I guess it's like for any bird of prey, effectively. Over here we have photographer, so birds with colors in their names. If we have four to five birds with colors in their names, we play this card, we get three points. If we have six plus, we play it, we get six points. There you go. And so we'll probably take photographer on this one since that lines up better with what we've got going on. Uh, we have sparrows, so if we had a card that had sparrows named in it, like we were effectively playing like a sparrow deck, we'd be in really good shape. Alright, so we're in the game right now. It is our first turn. So, the general UI. Uh, this is where the game gets a little bit sticky, and so I'm going to kind of go slow, and hopefully I can explain it all to you. This game is actually one of the more complicated games I've played lately, as far as card games go. We can click on different habitats, and it's going to take us to different areas, and these different habitats do different things. I don't know what this purple guy does at the top. I wasn't paying attention very well during the tutorial, and I've totally forgotten. Anyways, uh, we can take a look at all of the habitats kind of streamlined right here if we wanted to, but not that important for right now. On the water tiles, we draw cards. So if we need new birds or we need new abilities, we get them from here on the water tile. We can activate this button right here and click it to spend our turn drawing a card. We can go to the grasslands. This is where we go to lay eggs. We click on this and we get two eggs. And we can put them on any bird that we want in any habitat that we have. On this side, we can also get food. Uh, so we can draw food by clicking right here, or we can put a bird on top of it, and that'll allow us to draw food twice by spending our turn here. Or lay eggs twice by, you know, having a card here. For every card that you have in these habitats, that's why it gets more expensive. It, you get to basically have a multi-turn. So, let's start out in the forest. I would like to play my Song Sparrow here. So we're going to click on the Song Sparrow. It's going to get played. It's going to ask us what food we want to play. We need both of our other foods to play the Baird Sparrow on the next turn. And so we're just going to give this guy berries. It's already selected. So there we go. Dunsies. And that's going to be our first turn as far as I know. Yeah, there we go. Our first turn has been played. The cool thing is now we can play a double turn over here if we really, really want to. But we've got this Baird Sparrow. We're going to go ahead and we're going to play it down here in this habitat. One cool feature this game does have is if you go to the settings, you can actually get trivia about all these birds if you want and activate it. You can learn stuff about birds. It'll actually be like the Rednecked Warbler is known to be a part of North America. And like it'll give you kind of like a paragraph about the bird, which is really, really cool. If you're a bird watcher, you're interested in that kind of stuff. I I think it's kind of fascinating. I do enjoy naturalism. I 
have a geology degree, and so what goes along with that, I know I make fun of, I know I poke fun at biologists, and I know I poke fun at botanists and things all the time, but that's because we're all a part of the natural sciences, and so we naturally rib each other. So anyways, I do enjoy animals and things like that while I'm out and exploring and doing maps and things of that nature, which I haven't done in a long time, but back when I was a geologist, I did. Now let's see here, we've got Baird Sparrow. We want to play this guy. Let's go ahead and do it. When he's activated, I can lay an egg on any bird that I want. That's actually pretty good. Uh, we'll go ahead and pay his cost. Baird Sparrow. Spencer Baird was the first curator of the Smithsonian. There you go. So apparently it was either named after him. In general, in, in taxonomy, you're not allowed to name things after yourself. That's considered very tacky scientifically if you find an animal and you name it after yourself. In the scientific community, that's generally not okay. Uh, that's one of the first things that I was taught as a geologist when we were doing our, our taxonomy and our Latin and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, you name it after somebody else. So obviously somebody respected Baird. They found this bird and named it after him. Uh, we have three points banked right now. That's not too bad. Uh, so now's when eggs are going to come into the game. I'm going to spend this turn laying eggs, I think, because we need one egg right here. You can see it on this. If we wanted to play another bird on here, we have to have an egg that's already banked on one of the birds in this region, and we don't have that. In addition, if we wanted to do it over here, we would need an extra egg. And, and so this guy is going to get activated. The downside is uh, we're going to lay an egg right here. And we're gonna lay an egg right here good and then as you can see because we played on the grasslands tile this guy's ability right here allows us to lay an extra egg so we're gonna bank it right there and there you go we're done with our turn and so we banked all of our eggs and we're ready to rock and so on the next turn we're gonna have to do something else we're kind of waylaid right now uh, we're gonna have to draw a card so let's go find the next bird that we want to play here and it's gonna be a pretty pretty long path to get any of these guys played, but we've got a Pine Siskin over here. We can tuck a card from our hand behind this bird. If we do, we can gain one grain. Okay. We don't have anything with colors in its name, so I'll probably actually use that card right there. We'll go ahead and take this guy. And that's pretty much it. Now we've got a Pine Siskin. I'm sure we're way behind on the point spread right now, but I do want to play this Pine Siskin. Uh, what I would rather do is let's go ahead and get some food from the feeder. So I'm going to take this guy right here. Okay. And then because we have another bird on this tile. Oh, no. He wants to move to another habitat. If bird is to the right of all other birds in habitat. Move it to a different one. Oh, no. I don't want to move him, though. Okay. Well, we'll move him down to the water, I guess. That sucks. I thought if he was the rightmost, he moves, so he can't be played on the rightmost, but I guess I read that wrong. It's unfortunate. This is kind of a problem. We're wasting a lot of turns right now. I only have one grain. I'm going to need another grain to play this dude over here, but... We'll pull another one. we got to stay in it to win it right now. Alright, so now we can play the Pine Asiskin. Oh, cool. So apparently this guy has a bird that gives all of us berries from the supply. Nice. I'll take it. Uh, Pine Siskin's going to be played right there. Pine Siskins are gregarious, traveling in flocks to look for food. Huh. Never heard of a Siskin before. I don't know if we have those where I live at. We got a lot of sparrows. We got a lot We got a lot of quail, but not a whole lot of palm. We got a lot of hawks, too. Trust me, like red tail hawks are everywhere around here. And just sit on the power lines looking down all day. You'll see him catch a you'll see him catch a snake or you'll see him catch a mouse every now and again on the side of the highway, diving down off the poles or sitting on the fences and whatnot, and they just sit there all day long, just still as death. They don't move. You wouldn't even know they're alive if you're looking at them. It looks like they're froze up and they just sit there. But if you look real closely, you can see their retinas just kind of darting back and forth, just watching like into the grass for any type of rodent or anything else they can catch. I saw one flying through the air the other day with a big old two, three foot snake in its feet. Like the snake was definitely too big for the bird, but he'd already killed it and he was flying off with it. All right, so we got our Siskin over here. That's good. I think we probably need some more cards. Would probably be the best way to get this done. All right, let's take, there's an Eastern Kingbird. Once between turns, when another player plays a bird, 
gain a worm from the supply. That's not too bad. I'll take him. Do I get to take two because I got this other guy over here? Oh, really? He wants to move to a different habitat. All right. Um... I guess I can move him around. I guess the point of that, when he's activated, is that he carries eggs around with him, and so you can rapidly deploy eggs to any region where you might need them. That's kind of cool. I didn't even think about that, in all honesty. Uh, let's take him back over to the forest, I guess. There we go. Oh, really? We're winning right now. Oh, we're tied for second. I was going to say, by some miracle, we seem to be winning right now. Which is weird, because I've only played like two birds. So, where'd that Pine Siskin go? Where'd we play him at? So the Baird Sparrow is over here, and Pine Siskin and you are over here. So technically we should have six points, right? How many points do these guys have? I'm curious. Oh, this guy put down a crane. That's where he got all his points from. Okay. So he's got three, or that's me, hold on. Let's go back over here. So he's got a black turn right there. I think we have those where I live. We definitely have turns where I live. We definitely have like sandpipers out by the ocean. Uh, so we've got the turn right there, that's four points. And he's got nine for a Baltimore Oriole, wow. Okay, so no wonder he's winning. He played like a money bird out there. He went for a quality bird while we were messing around with our dirt birds, okay. Now, we got a couple plays over here. I, I do think we need to play the Kingbird, and we don't have any insects, unfortunately. So let's go ahead, and we're going to grab two food from the feeder over here. I'm going to go with a worm. Yeah, let's go with the worm. And I already have berries, so I need to worry about that. Grain tends to be pretty common, so I'm going to take a grain right there. Sounds good. And he's going to want to go to a different habitat. All right, uh, we'll put him down... Oh, I don't know. I need to lay some eggs anyways, so I guess we'll move him down to the grasslands. That sounds good. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll tuck... Uh... Okay, so I can only tuck a bird behind him. I can't put the photographer card behind him, which is kind of what I was hoping to do. I'll skip over the ability. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care about it. We can skip on it. That's the nice thing a lot about a lot of the activatable abilities is you can just kind of ignore them. They don't really matter altogether that much. Now, we've got the Eastern Kingbird. we got to kind of decide where we want to play him. I do think playing him over here where we gather food is a good idea. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, we'll give him the berry, I guess. And then we can spend an egg. Yeah, we'll spend that egg right there. Eastern Kingbird. The Kingbird displays its orange crown while defending its territory. Hmm. There you go. It's one of those fighty birds. It used to happen to me. There was these little roadrunner type deals. I don't even know what they were. They're like these little sparrows that lived on the ground. My parents have acreage, and a lot of it is like for ranching. And so it's all cleared out, and it's for horse ranching. They don't have horses, but the people before them had horses that were, you know, running in derbies and stuff like that. So anyways, when I would mow the field out there, there's these long rushes that would grow. They're probably four or five feet tall. I'd have to go out there on the riding mower when I was a kid and mow them all over. And you would mow the field, but they would lay their eggs on the ground. So you had to kind of walk the field first and figure out where the nests were. And there was really no way around it. You got to clear the field out because it's a fire hazard here in California. You can be fined for having grasses that tall. But at the same time, the birds live out there in the field and they'll dive bomb your head and they'll attack you and whatnot because they see you mowing the field out there. The mower sat too high, so it wouldn't get the nests most of the time. It would just go right over the top of them. The nests were partially like buried in the ground, basically, in like little holes. But anyways, kind of a interesting anecdote from when I was a kid. What do we have going on here? So I don't have any birds or anything. I definitely think we should probably draw a card. We've got a, a spotted tally, okay? I gain one from the supply whenever that's activated. You're not worth points, though, dude. Uh, we've got a hooded merganser over here, and we actually have most of the stuff to play him. So yeah, we'll get the merganser. He's got a crazy five head on him right there. It's not an attractive looking bird. Oh, okay, he's got like a, I don't know what he, he's got like a man dark ass head right there. I don't really know what to call it. Oh, nice. He played a card, so we gain a, a worm from the supply. Hell yeah. I'll take that. Free worm. Free worm. Uh, 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 uh. All right, so we can gain food over here, which I strongly suggest that we do. 
I'm going to take a fish. We already have berries, so I'm just going to take double fish right there just to line us up a little better. I can tuck a card, but I don't really want to because I want to play this guy for the five points. That's what I really want. You played a Franklin's Gull in there and then a Horned Lark in the Grasslands. All right, well, this Merganser is about to go in here. So there's our Merganser. Merganser. Merganser chicks jump from their cavity nest to the ground when they're just one day old. Huh. Yeah, he does have a cavity nest, I guess. So they build nests inside holes in the sides of trees and things of that nature. Uh, they've been laying eggs over there. He's drawing birds. Okay, I'd like to draw a bird too, I guess. We've got a common raven right there, which I think is a pretty good draw. We don't have a mouse, unfortunately, so we're going to have to track down a mouse, I think. We could play the robin right now. Yeah. I suppose I'll take the robin. And then I think I can spend an egg to get one more card, right? Yeah, discard an egg to get one more card. Can I do that, like, right now? There you go. Yeah, discard an egg off of him. And then I'll take the raven as well. Yeah. There we go. That sounds good. Like, you can see what I mean. This is kind of an interesting game because it is a competitive game where you're playing against other players. But at the same time, you get so caught up in these cool little animated cards and, like, the work that's gone into sort of this... That layered animation right there where you slide in between habitats. Like, it really is a well-put-together game. Like, it's not going to be a card game that's for everybody if you're into, like, fantasy battling and whatnot. But, like, at the same time... I need these guys to play some more stuff inside of... This is the final turn of the round. So he laid eggs, he laid eggs, he laid eggs. All right. That sounds fine to me. Laying eggs is probably something that we should get on anyways. Our sparrow is going to move. So we kind of want to think about where we want him to go and where we need access to eggs before too long. I don't think we're going to need too many eggs. I need to get a mouse in order to feed this guy, but I don't think we have mice right now inside the forest. If I click on this, can I I can re-roll it, right? Yeah, let's re-roll it. I definitely need the mice. So let me get the mouse, and what else am I low on? I mean, I can pretty much take whatever. It doesn't really matter. I can tuck a card behind this guy. I don't really think it's that great of an idea right now. I, I don't really want to. I don't I don't need grain, so like Yeah, so apparently he had five birds with that specific nest type right there, and we had zero. Feels bad. Hurts my feelings, uh, but we do need eggs inside of our grasslands by the end of this round because this is a really big opportunity for us to get a lot of points. So if we can move this guy right here, this song sparrow, if we can fill him up with eggs and get him into this area, I, I think we have a really, really strong play ready to go. That's what I'm thinking. We'll play this guy over in the forest first. Yeah, we'll play you right there. You can have berries. That's fine. There you go. So he's all nice and played in. Oh, I gotta spend an egg. God, I was trying to... I was sitting there thinking, like, what does it want from me right now? It wants me to spend an egg. There we go. So we just spent American an egg right Robin. there. Robins have been known to roost in groups of 100,000 or more. Wow. I had no idea. I learned a fun fact today. Well, that is a very, very real fact right there. I absolutely need to lay eggs. So let's load these guys up right here. Yeah. We'll load these guys up right here. I mean, this is just points that we're scoring right now. So I'm going to spend the next couple turns just laying a ton of eggs because I feel like we've really... 
we've got a chance to make like seven points right here, which will make up the difference on a lot of the stuff. Then we play the Raven inside the forest or the waterworks area. Oh no, he's been activated. Oh no. Okay, so we're gonna have to move him back at some point. Okay, we'll move him over to here. It's okay, it's okay. And then we gotta lay an egg on a bird over here. So that's fine. It's okay, we're not at the end of our turn just yet. I still have time to move him back and I was planning on playing the Raven in that zone anyways. So I think we'll be all right. Over there drawing birds, gaining food. Sounds good to me. I'll put you over there. Food's fine. I need two eggs. All right, so I need this guy to move back to the wetlands. So, we're gonna go with all the food we can possibly carry. I can discard an egg and it'll give me two of any food from the supply. I'm gonna skip it. Actually, don't skip. I'm gonna activate him so I can move him. And then we'll go We'll just even it out a little bit. We'll just grab a little bit of everything. Uh, I don't want to tuck anything. I don't want to tuck anything. Shouldn't he have moved? I feel like he was activated. Oh no, dude. I've misplayed. I desperately need him to go back to the grasslands. Like, badly. But I think he's stuck here now. I don't think I ever fully grasped entirely how he works. I needed him to be all the way on the right. I think I just locked him in. I did. So I was thinking he was the last one on the right, so when I played that, he would get activated and moved on out. Not how it works. Aw, oh, dude, I just screwed myself out of winning. Feels bad. Feels terrible. Eh, we can discard some grain to get an extra egg. Sounds good to me. I will, yeah, keep putting eggs on him, I guess. We got five out of 21 eggs, but it has to be in grasslands, unfortunately. Yeah, I guess I'll take the berries. I don't really want them, but I'll take them. I mean, we did get some more points in play this time around, so we really just got to kind of hope that the eggs in the grassland don't come around. But yeah, this is Wingspan, dude. This is Wingspan. I like it a lot, actually. I think it's a pretty cool contemplative game, and it's got fun animation. It's clear they put a lot of work into this conversion, and so I don't really have much of a problem with it. I find a lot of the time with board game conversions that they're done really cheaply and really poorly by, like, the lowest possible bidder, in effect. Now, what I like about this game is actually you can tell that they put a lot of work into it. All the portraits are animated, like everything moves, everything swings around, everything's got like a sound effect. The sound design is fantastic. Like you can click on like anything in the game and it'll actually play like what their cry sounds like. You know, it, it's cool. I, I like it a lot. I, I think it's a it's a pretty sweet game. And so anyways, oh, we got a Cassin Sparrow over there. We got a redheaded and a green heron. Yeah, I'll take you. And then also, I need to discard an egg. Hold on, I'm caught up playing the game. No, don't do that. Don't do that. That's that's a mistake. Don't do that. Get rid of one of his eggs. There we go. His eggs don't matter. And then we'll take this red-headed woodpecker thing over here. Woodpeckers are the most annoying animal in the world, by the way. In case you were wondering. Oh, apparently I get another draw, too. Nice. Well, I'll take all of them. Got a few plays that we can make here on the next round. But yeah, this is Wingspan. I hope you guys liked it. I'll see y'all later if you enjoyed this. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. I will see you all later on with fun things. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Check out my Twitch stream for more. And that's all I got. Goodbye, everybody.